Good morning. Welcome to our service of worship. He has done all things well. That is what the people said after Jesus healed a man who could neither speak nor hear, opening his ears and loosing his tongue so he could sing God's praises. In a similar way, God has opened our ears through his word of promise to believe in Jesus. And now with our tongues, we confess and worship, worship him this morning with our songs of praise and our prayers. Special welcome to our guests this morning. We invite you to come back and worship with us again anytime. We'll be following divine service setting one. It'll be on page 151. Our service begins with the opening hymn, Praise the Almighty, hymn 797. God's blessings on our worship.
join together in the invocation and confession on page 151. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We take a moment for silent self-examination. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
the Lord be with you. Let us pray together the prayer of the day as printed in your bulletin. O Lord, let your merciful ears be open to the prayers of your humble servants and grant that what they ask may be in accord with your gracious will. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We also speak together the word of the month from Ephesians 6, verse 13. Take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Ephesians 6, verse 13. You may be seated for the further reading of God's word. Old Testament reading for this, the 16th Sunday after Pentecost, is taken from the prophet Isaiah, the 35th chapter. The prophet writes, Say to those who have an anxious heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For waters break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is taken from the epistle of St. James, the second chapter. St. James writes, My brothers, show no partiality as you hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. For if a man wearing a gold ring and fine clothing comes into your assembly, and a poor man in shabby clothing also comes in, and if you pay attention to the one who wears the fine clothing and say, You sit here in a good place, while you say to a poor man, You stand over there, or sit down at my feet. Have you not then made distinctions among yourselves, and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man. Are not the rich the ones who oppress you and the ones who drag you into court? Are they not the ones who blaspheme the honorable name by which you were called? If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing well. But if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body. What good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. This is the word of the Lord. As you are able, we stand for the Alleluia. The 
Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the seventh chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. From there Jesus arose and went away to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And he entered a house and did not want anyone to know, yet he could not be hidden. But immediately a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile, a Syrophoenician by birth, and she begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And he said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And he said to her, For this statement you may go your way. The demon has left your daughter. And she went home and found the child lying in bed and the demon gone. Jesus returned from the region of Tyre and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. And they brought to him a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment. And they begged him to lay his hand on him. And taking him aside from the crowd privately, he put his fingers into his ears, and after spitting, touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephlepha, that is, be opened. And his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. And Jesus charged them to tell no one but the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. We continue now by joining together and singing our sermon hymn, Hymn 524, how sweet the name of Jesus sounds. Hymn 524, you may be seated.
grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our text is from the epistle of James, the second chapter, this verse. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? This is God's word. Dear friends in Christ, many eulogies were given at the funerals for John McCain and Aretha Franklin. Even those who disagreed with McCain's politics showed him the R-E-S-P-E-C-T that Aretha sang about. You see, it is one thing to say you love your country, another to endure torture for it like he did. He was a loyal American soldier. Now, if you were asked what makes a loyal American, what would you expect to hear? Respect the flag. Seek the good of the nation. Respect its laws. There would also be agreement on some things a good American should not do. We should not sell secrets to our enemies. We should not support terrorists that attack other Americans. We should not betray our nation or its freedoms of religion or of speech. But what about being a good Christian? What does a good Christian look like? That's the question James gets to in this text. He helps us to see that Christianity is not about being partial or about being passive, but instead Christian faith leads us to be partners with Jesus. Now, as we look at the challenges of the Christians in the early first century, I think you will agree that those challenges face us too. Step back in time for a moment to see what James saw. Someone walks into church dressed in a nice suit, an expensive watch. The ushers find him a good seat. Those sitting there gladly move over to make room. The preacher makes sure to greet him warmly after the service. Not far behind comes another, poorly dressed. No one goes out of their way to welcome him or hope you'll be back next Sunday. What's going on? People are showing partiality. This partiality, James says, is not consistent with Christianity. These Christians, in fact, were reverting back to their old ways of Judaism. Judaism and the other religions basically said this, be nice to those who can pay you back, the wealthy in particular. Now, why would they say that? Well, they believed that you could tell whether or not God likes somebody by the size of their house, the clothes they wore, and their standard of living. They believed that wealth was a sign of God's approval and poverty a sign of God's disapproval. And if that were true, then it made sense to cater to the wealthy because God liked them. And what was their motive for following God's law? Do good so that God will reward you too. Now, of course, there are rewards for being a follower of God. But to say that following God is like a business transaction where you work for him for the sake of getting rich is not what Jesus taught. In fact, Jesus had a problem with that assumption, which is why the Jews had a problem with Jesus. If anything, Jesus said, God is partial to the poor. In Mark 10, verse 25, Jesus said, How hard it is for the wealthy to enter the kingdom. In the Sermon on the Mount, he said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Now, Jesus did not dislike wealthy people, but he knew that if you miss the point of having wealth, it became a trap. If God blesses us with wealth, he is empowering us to do what God loves to do, to help those in need, to give us the chance to do good. But wealth does not describe or define our situation before God. Jesus says before God, it's all grace. Because of sin, we deserve nothing from God. 
And yet Jesus emptied himself, though he was rich, in order to fill us with grace. He died to pay for our sins. He rose to give us new life. So if we stand before God by grace, we sin if we judge others based on what they have. But being partial was not their only problem. James also takes aim at being passive. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? Now, it's common these days to hear people say that they are spiritual but not religious. That usually means they see their relationship with God as a personal thing but see no need to be involved in a church. Faith, in this case, is a frame of mind that likes God, but the attitude does not translate into getting to church on Sunday or helping other people. It's something like those who say, I love baseball, but they never check the baseball scores, never attend the game, never buy the shirts. Or maybe like those who play fantasy football, not to support a particular team, but to use their skills to try to win their part of the pool. Now, there's nothing wrong with fantasy sports, but fantasy faith is dangerous. To think that Christ's call, follow me, means nothing else than thinking nice thoughts about me is fantasy faith. It is more dangerous than wearing a virtual life preserver instead of a real one. Virtual thoughts are no substitute for virtuous actions. Now in the case of these early Christians, some were saying that believing in what Jesus did was all they needed. I have faith. I don't need to do good to others. I don't need to go to church. I don't need to give. I don't need to volunteer. After all, we're not saved by our works, right? And James says, of course we're not saved by our works. We're saved by Christ's work of obedience for us and his death for us. But saving faith is more than a mental attitude. It is more than admiring Jesus. It means doing what Jesus did. Faith makes us partners with Christ. He goes on, if a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to him, go in peace, be warmed and filled, Without giving them the things they need for the body, what good is that? So faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Now the disciples learned that from Jesus in the gospel. They view this woman approaching Jesus for help as unworthy of God's attention or of their trouble. Jesus saw her differently. Her faith was as important as theirs. And their faith should change them from being partial or passive to being partners with him. And partnership simply means we act on what we believe. That when we help someone, we are actually serving Jesus. That when we come to worship, we are actually serving Jesus. That Jesus actually meant what he said when he said, As you have done it to one of the least of these, you've done it to me. And by done, Jesus doesn't mean just thinking nice thoughts or being spiritual in heart. He means engaging, helping, serving. This kind of faith gets people out of bed to worship, gets us involved in the life of the community, gets us around to check on our neighbor. And it does so not in the hopes that somehow a reward will be coming our way, but because faith changes us into those who are more and more like Jesus. Now, this is not a news flash, but Jesus ascended more than a few years ago. Yet his promises are still good for the world. Who is to carry on the work of Jesus? We are. Not by possessing his miraculous powers to heal, but by bringing his still powerful word to bring faith and sight and hope. Who is to help feed the hungry? Who is to bring the little children to Jesus? The followers of Jesus, 
who are his hands, his feet, his mouth to the world. You see, when Jesus met people in need, he showed them the love and power and grace of God in action, changing their lives. And so it is to be for us. As a boat moving through the water leaves a wake behind it, so wherever Christians go, we are to leave a wake of good deeds behind us. They will know we have been with Jesus not by our words alone, but by deeds of love springing from faith. We are partners in the gospel, Paul said, not silent partners in the gospel, passively nodding our head in approval for what Jesus did. And we not only speak of the love of Jesus for others, we're to love as he loved, to serve as he served. And so as followers of Jesus, Emmanuel has a pretty challenging and broad ministry. We teach Jesus to hundreds of children from infancy on. We preach Jesus. We seek to act like Jesus when it comes to visiting the sick and reaching the lost and welcoming the stranger. Some of you help with orphan grain train, others with Bethania, others the clothing center or friendship Bible class. Some reach out to those who are addicted in our community, not just to tell them Jesus loves them, but to show them that they do. You give money to train and send missionaries and pastors and teachers. Why? That's what being a Christian is. That's what Christians do. Faith makes us working partners, directly sharing in the saving work of Jesus. And there is much yet to do while we have life and breath. The time for eulogies will come when life is over. But then the most important and beautiful words to our ears will be those simple words of Jesus. Well done, good and faithful servant. I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. A stranger, and you took me in. Enter into the joy of your master. In Jesus' name, amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting, amen. Let us confess together our faith as we speak the Nicene Creed found on page 158. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things, visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We worship the Lord now with the gathering of our tithes and offerings and encourage you to register your attendance. You'll also note there is a ballot in your bulletin today indicating your choice of a theme for our 150th anniversary. If you have time during the offering to complete that, pass it to the center to be gathered. If not, you can leave it with an usher as you leave. You may be seated.
As the offerings are brought forward, I invite you to stand as we sing the hymn of praise number 789, Praise and Thanksgiving. Heavenly Father, through your great power, you provide all we need to live on this earth, and you ask us to return a portion of what you provide back so that the work of the church can go forward and many will be saved. Accept these tithes and offerings here given in thanksgiving for your wonderful care. In Jesus' name, Amen. amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord, we pray for your church that we as baptized people would constantly open our ears to hear Jesus' words and constantly praise and honor him with our lips. We also ask that you would be with those who lead your church, that through faithful preaching and teaching, many will be led to your truth. For missionaries Leif Camp, Slava Shadron, Thomas Bernard, John Wolfe, Chuck Ferry, and Chaplain Matt Prince, we pray an extra measure of your strength and grace as they proclaim a God who says, Be strong, fear not, your God will come and save you. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we pray for our country, our president, our Congress, our justices, and all in authority in our land. Give them wisdom, courage, civility, and honor as they carry out their difficult responsibilities. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, we ask that you would come with your healing power to those who are weary in body and in spirit. Especially this day, we remember those who are in prison, those who are dealing with substance abuse, those who are in troubled relationships, and those who are dealing with bodily illnesses, including Sue Speaker, Josh Trueblood, Martha McIntyre, the mother of Linda Moore, Charles Tape, and those we name before you now in our hearts. Grant them deliverance according to your gracious will. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, you are the giver of life. We rejoice along with Corey and Hillary Pollard McNutt on the birth of a baby girl, Lane Elizabeth, on September the 1st. Keep mother and baby under your gracious care as we look forward to Lane becoming a member of the family of believers through holy baptism. We also celebrate along with Linda Helt, who celebrated her 80th birthday on September 7th. You have seen her through the joys and trials of life. Continue to support her so that she may faithfully serve you. Lord, in your mercy. 
Lord of love, in your wisdom, you instituted marriage as a way for man and woman to love each other and be united for life. For 50 years, Charles and Jennifer Tape have lived in that holy relationship of love. Bless them with many more years as they serve you through their love and service to each other. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, as September 11th will soon be here, and with it Patriot Day, a day to remember the terrorist attack upon our country that brought death or injury to thousands, we come to you asking for t continued comfort for families who lost loved ones that day. You have blessed us in our nation with freedom. Help us to cherish that freedom and inspire us to stand with courage in the midst of any adverse adversity, united as one nation under God. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our service continues on page 160 with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who having created all things took on human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death, thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive Renew and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, 
When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage that on the day of his coming, we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Several announcements before we close the service today. A reminder that Bible classes begin today and throughout this week. If you'd look in the insert in your bulletin today, you can see the dates, times, and locations for all those offerings. And we invite you to bring along with you a guest or a, a neighbor to those uh, opportunities to be in God's Word. There is a sign-up sheet for the church bus drivers for the Oktoberfest shuttle that we provide between our parking lot in the school and up to town and back over Oktoberfest. So if you're interested in doing that, please go ahead and sign up for that. And also a reminder that the fish fry for Emanuel Lutheran School is today from 4 to 7 out at the fair stand this year. A special note that State Road 250 is closed between Sligo Hill and the fairgrounds near Brownstown Electric. So in order to get to the fairgrounds, you need to go up to Highway 50 to get there. Vicar will be in the chapel to take prayer requests or other notes of care. Greet one another at the end of the service, and if you don't know your neighbors, introduce yourself. We close by singing hymn 832, Jesus Shall Reign. God's blessings on your week.